What's up, everyone? I got a relatively quick episode for you here and a handy dandy trick to show you how to make a cast aluminum weld repair to a threaded hole without having to redrill or tap it. We're going to go from this to this without destroying those threads. Let's get on it. Now, this transmission is uh, for my Mighty Max build. I'm literally in the middle of working on it right now, so hence why it's a quick episode. The, whoever took it out of here uh, probably just got a little careless with the transmission jack, maybe dropped it. Who knows? But I can't get a bolt in there, and it needs to be fixed anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do, grab a hold of my crud cutter. This is just a degreaser general cleaner, and I'm going to hit it with a wire brush. Really, really good. We want to get as much of that junk off of there as humanly possible. To get this down to bright metal, I'm going to use my carbide burr tool, and I'm going to scrape away basically anything that uh, is damaged, and including cutting into these threads a little bit. I'm going to be very, very careful with this. Now, I know a lot of people have mentioned not to use this style carbide burr because they clog up and all the rest of that stuff, but if you press lightly, like you should be doing, uh, it won't clog up, so you can use this all day long. Now, it's important that your affected area comes down to bright metal, and I'm not talking about just hitting it with a wire brush. You actually need to get uh, a layer down in there uh, above the top layer that holds all the oils and the, you know, the, all the junk that gets stuck into there because cast aluminum is very porous. So as soon as you get down bright metal, skim the layer off the top, hit it with some acetone, let that dry, and then I'm going to blast it with the torch. Now, the torch is going to serve two purposes here. One, it's going to give us a mild preheat. Now, a small section like this, we don't even need that many amps to get into it, so uh, it preheat's not really necessary. But the most important thing it's going to do is blast away any excess oil and burn it all off of there. That's very important. Now, this bolt right here is stainless steel. That is important that you use that and not zinc-coated, no grade 8, no none of that stuff, no black oxide. Straight up, stainless steel is exactly what you need. It's going to serve two functions here, or two purposes. One, it's going to keep that hole from caving in because there's not a lot of surface area. In the event that you get it too hot, you will have completely destroyed it. The second thing is you do need to get it relatively hot so that way you get some uh, fluidity out of the uh, molten aluminum as it's going. And while it has that fluidity, while it's flowing down there, it's going to hold the impression of those threads exactly where they need to be, which means you don't have to get a tap lined up dead on and you don't run a risk of ruining your hole. So stainless steel only, nothing else. When it comes to setting up the welder, I like to run a lower frequency and a higher percentage of balance or closer to a 50-50 balance. So in this case, I'm going to set it up to 60 hertz and 40%. The lower frequency gives me a little bit more energy per cycle. So more time cleaning, more time powering down into it as opposed to a high frequency where it's bouncing back and forth rapidly. This is actually kind of uh, preferred by some people, or it's, uh, it's, it's very useful. And you can see here, as I'm moving along here, I'm just kind of moving the torch around, getting a molten pool established. And you can see all the little bubbles and stuff that are kind of coming out of it. We definitely do not want to go in there and try and tack it right away with filler. You want to create a new layer, uh, basically like a new cast layer of molten aluminum, so you can add filler to that. Uh, so again, very kind of light work on the uh, on the actual uh, pedal itself. What you're basically doing is trying to look at your weld pool and look for all the bubbles and basically chase them all out. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of heat. It's just basically a new surface layer. You you're gonna repeat this until all of the bubbles are gone. Like literally, if it if it takes you know 20 minutes because it's a really dirty nasty cast, then it takes 20 minutes. That's just the way it is. If they come out right away, cool. But you're basically gonna keep on repeating this until all of the bubbles are gone. My filler of choice is ER4043, 1 16th diameter. I use 4043 for virtually everything, unless it's anodized. So on cast aluminum, it works beautifully. Flows right in there just the way that I want it to. Now, my technique on this one is I'm basically uh, patting up a bunch of aluminum very lightly, just getting it to stick to the top of it. And then uh, after I have a few beads in place and I've rebuilt that section, if you will, I'm going to go in there very heavy on the amperage and I'm going to let that aluminum flow, kind of basically melt in there, go a little bit too hot, if you will. But I'll still poke in a little bit of aluminum here and there just to make sure that it doesn't fall away on me, that we're, we're maintaining that build up. Now this section around the edge, I just call it like the spine here, uh, if you will, it only needed a single pass, nothing, nothing real fancy. So just making sure that the dabs are relatively heavy, that my final result is the, uh, each dab is above uh, the area because we're, you know, we're just going to grind it all back down uh, with a nice area. That was just relatively gouged, so not nearly as bad as the area around the bolt hole. Now, it does take some time to let each one of these cool down in between each pass, so make sure you let it cool down because there's not a lot of surface area on there. And as soon as you are satisfied that you have enough 
uh, metal on there and it worked itself back down and everything else like that, continue to build it up or at least do another build up on the outside of it. Sixty grit flap disc. That's what's on the grinder, and it is brand new because uh, I wanted a nice, flat, clean, neat, even edge. Uh, I'm very, very, very light pressure on this one. Just letting the flap disc do the work, so I can kind of reshape it. Yes, there are other tools that you can use, but if uh, this is all you had, then this will definitely do the job. And that's kind of like what I like to show here. The small file here kind of knocks down all the ridges, all the sharp edges, and everything else like that. Uh, it allows me also to get down deep into certain grooves where the flap disc wouldn't reach, nor would I dare try. We don't need to get too crazy with it. I also don't want to gouge it down or anything else like that. Sandpaper kind of just gets rid of uh, all of the marks from the file. Now, I want to recondition this kind of like it was still cast, and I have found over the years that a very heavy knotted wire wheel, which most people have, uh, it will do the job. Press relatively hard or push down onto it until it really starts digging in, and you notice the, uh, the pattern it leaves behind is kind of like a uh, cast part again. It's just now it's shiny. I'm going to chamfer out that hole to line it back up again. And as soon as we test fit the bolt back in, we know we're good to go. So a little bit of uh, self-critique here. Uh, I feel like I was in kind of a rush to hurry up and get this engine and transmission installed into the uh, chassis jig. So uh, if I would have slowed down a little bit, I bet you I could have made it just a little bit cleaner. But I'm not totally dissatisfied with my work here. It's just I think I could have given a little bit more detail to it. But here's a before. Here's an after. Once again, the before and the after right next to it. So if you got any questions, give me a shout down below. I got to go get this engine and transmission installed. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.